Zeri was been played out of their minds in game number one. Um, and alone was just able to utilize this specific champion to free hit. But now it still leaves the possibility for the Kazakhs pick for the side of EDG. So that's something that they still have to respect. And now EDG could ban away the Lee Sin. They should. I mean, despite Weba having a bit of a hard time. I'll... Oh, no ban. No ban. Huh. Okay. So I think overall, you know what? That works still. Now, Tracy Esports could pick a random jungler. Oh, well, not random. Yeah. It's still a strong jungler. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I meant, right? They could yeah. pick up the Kha'Zix, the Lee Sin. The Jace is also really strong when it comes to early game. Ooh. So that really works well still for Tracy Esports. So if, if EDG opts to ban away the Lee Sin, Tracy Esports could still pick this up. And the reason why this would work is because they have two frontliners already with the Orn and the Jax. And this is a double poke wherein you have the Ezreal and you have the Jace as those strong long-range damage. Damage dealers and EDG is going to pick up their Krasana instead. This is so good for today's esports, to be honest. Yeah, you mentioned it. Both of the perks of having this kind of composition is just going to be very impactful as well for this game. Very good. At least the Kazakh gets picked up here for for 0, 7 11 but I'm liking huh? what I'm seeing already. Even the investment for global player oh. is there. They locked oh. it in. Oh, when was the last time we saw Twisted Fate come into the draft and we're seeing it back once again. Uh, such a new flavor coming in for the side of Tracy Esports, and I am loving it. I'm loving it uh, as well. It's it's very little times actually that we the, the last time we saw it. <laughs> uh, uh, JDG used it against the Akali matchup as well when Feibai matched against Soldier against J Team. Invade Esports used it but lost that game. Man, so many losses actually on this Twisted Fate so far. There but is, there is. The only win so far we have seen on it is JDG and Tracy Sports. Yaoza yeah. actually picked this up against KT. And I'm loving it not because of its win rate, but I'm loving it because it's new. But the, the thing about Twisted Fate is it's the same concept when it comes to a Shen pickup. Yes, Shen is a much more favorable global ultimate with a stand united gives so much sustain for the team and it also gives you that extra member coming into those team fights but it's similar concept into the twisted fate right you have the global pressure mm -hmm. you have that information into addition to that right you see every single member to the opposing side yeah. when you use destiny in addition to that you also have the stun to follow through so that is the good part about twisted fate the question is can trace esports utilize this well because the thing is they're only Frontliners will be Jax and will be Orn. And if the side of EDG will have that pressure onto the side lanes, Jax will not be able to enter onto those team fights. And if the, I mean, if there's a team that is going to be able to fully utilize this Twisted Raid pick, it should be Trace Esports. And they need it as well right now. Every bit of energy that can be channeled should be challenged. Uh, channeled right now here in this game because everything yeah. is on the line. The only undefeated team is Trace Esports and EDG is wanting to change that. But quite honestly, EDG is on a good spree here. You know what? They're, they're basically having like a buy one take one in a shopping spree that they have in this draft, right? Because when we're looking at it, who can they target? It's pretty much every single one aside from Orn and Jax, mm -hmm. right? Jace is pretty much a squishy target, especially when he builds up to that full penetration items, right? With the Edge of Night, with the Yumu's Ghost Blade, with these penetration items. And then you also have Ezreal that could also be the target. Twisted Fate is also a squishy target. Yes, yeah. they have distance. But the thing is, Akali could enter those fights quite easily. Kha'Zix could also jump into those fights quite easily. Yeah. So EDG, if they utilize those assassins, they will have a good time coming to this game too. Especially that there's Kha'Zix and Tristan, right? Oh, this is quite yeah. a risky composition for Trace Esports. But let's see if they are going to be able to fully utilize this. Lisa's actually taking a bit more damage than he's supposed to in this matchup Effective. right now. Especially with the vital Proctor of Xiao Jian. Yeah, Fiora is undisputed the best duelist champion coming into the top side of the map. There's there's no one that could contest it. Right, put it... Put a Camille come up on top side, use the ultimate, your post could cancel it out. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's just so good. I mean, rather the hook shot, right? So there's just a lot of opportunities for the Fiora to really outmaneuver and outduel all single champions here on the top side of the map. And you have the vital points, as you mentioned. So this is already to be expected. But 
pretty much Tristana, because you talked about it, is pretty much a late game insurance for EDG. If the assassin's possibility for the likes of Kha'Zix and Akali would not work, they still have something to double down on when it comes to the late game. Li Sao just spotting out uh, Xiao Zhang there in the top lane will be cancelling the recall. At, at most, the honey, uh, honey fruit will be picked up just to heal himself back to you know, 70, 80% HP. EDG just uh, helping out the mid lane as well, especially with the rotations of the support here. Korn has a big responsibility to make this Twisted Fate work, especially with the in the early game because similar to game number one, taking time bomb once again. Yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty much that point we're in. Trace Esports has to put on full pressure, but if there's someone, if there's a team that can do it, it will probably be Trace Esports, right? We we've, we've commended Huayba's pressure a while ago with the Lee Sin. That was just out of this world. The amount of pressure, the amount of camps that he was able to deny at from zero seven eleven was uncalled out for, uncalled for rather. Um, from that game number one. And Crazy Esports could apply the same amount of pressure that they did in game one here mm -hmm. in this early game. And that is something that they need. Yeah, they need it. EDG just gonna be waiting patiently later on for their power spikes. Wait for the best opportunity to engage. Wait for Langley to set up the plays. And then they will just go in without hesitation. That's the name of the game always for EDG. That's why they're so, so scary to be matched upon against. Because... They're really just deadly. And Trace Esports witnessed it a while ago in game number one. This time is playing it safe, waiting for four minutes, maybe five minutes yeah. before they actually strike. Look at this. The rotations coming in from Trace Esports. They understand they are, that they're already level five. So the thing is, Call of the Forge God can occur here for the bottom lane and they could pressure in up against EDG. Tristana at this point in time, yes, they have the ultimate to knock back onto these oppos opposing members, but. Crazy Esports have a massive advantage. You also have the global ultimate with Korn with the Destiny. Oof. So many CC layering actually is available for Crazy Esports. If they can get a burst down later on, especially to the crucial members of EDG, then that's a great start. I think they have to repeat what they did in game number one, but have a better execution onto it as well. This is one step, but Juju! Juju! Oh no, he's in a lot of trouble. That's a great oh. burst already! The charge did not! Connect on the 0711 as well, but please the the barrage. That's it, he's there. He will Destiny go in, in the front. flash. Corn, the bottom step is gonna be there though to stop him up. Call it the Forge God gonna be used. Corn in a lot of trouble, still able to flash out. And alone, also going to be exiting out. Alone going in with a perfect execution. Trace Esports needs to be very careful, of course. The perfect execution can still be used on the second proc. They didn't push through this time around. No casualties, but the RH is being started by 0711. That confidence coming in from Corn was unexpected. Destiny into the front of three members for the set of EDG what? is something that you don't do, especially up against Assassins. That was close as well. Juju going in with the Mystic Shot, 341 HP left. Juju, you going a bit of shuriken is just so scary as well. Lambie gonna be following up. Stack is taking a bit of damage, but he needs to walk out. Charge, fortunately, is there. The trade up by Trace Esports. 0711 is here. Going inside of it. Actually, jumps in. The J still is going to be picking up the dragon. Hey, the J was going to be in a lot of trouble. Still able to take him down. And EDG happy with the trade. This is what we're saying, right? It, it comes across as a very good macro sequence by EDG. Right, they, they forced the pressure coming into the top side of the map. It was 0711 just waiting onto the bush. Forced the flash coming from Juju. They won that fight overall because the thing is, Crazy Esports had the massive HP disadvantage. Mm -hmm. So EDG got a free Rift Herald. There was no contest for Crazy Esports. Trace had to go in for the reset to go into the Drake. And then after that, EDG went into the bottom part of the map, attempted that contest on the dragon. Yes, they lost it, but that's not the exactly, or that's not something that they have to steal, right? They only have to contest yeah. it. They killed Weiba coming in from that fight, and they were able to take the tier 1 turret into the mid. So overall, massive macro advantage by EDG from what they did there. At most, it's just a mitigation by Trace Esports as well, because it would have been so disastrous if 0711 was able to steal out that first dragon. Fortunately, it wasn't the case. EDG still is ahead by 2,000 gold. And this is very different from game number one. Yeah, very, very different as well. You know what? EDG now 
actually dictating the whole game thus far coming into the early game. And we still had the Tristana coming into their draft, who is currently just able to get a lot of free experience and free goal because thus far coming into the early game matchup there was no gang there was no engage coming for the side of crazy esports that could deny tristana out from golden experience oh man yeah you're right it's going to be very difficult for Trace Esports to even chase down this Tristana later on. Yes, they have the Oracle. Yes, they have the Destiny. But after and those are used already, no one's going to be there to chase. The Jazz can try, but they have to bust their shot. Langley this time around. It's being targeted and already too late. But this time, here comes you. Destiny going to be used. And it's going to be the target this time around. Perfect execution going to be used to exit out. But still able to knock him up before he's able to exit. Shot Blast as well connects, but at least he's fine. Yeah, and the thing is, right, from what we have seen, it was alone who, has, who is a level ahead up against Juju. And yes, Juju was able to come back when it comes to that experience, but throughout that fight, it was alone who was level 9, it was Juju who was level 8. And that speaks a lot of volume from what we have mentioned, and that is just a supporting statement to how EDG had just free time for Tristana to gain a lot of experience, gain a lot of gold coming towards the first 8 minutes of this game. And if this continues, Crazy Esports will just have a difficult time because they still have to be worried about you and 0711 mm -hmm. assassinating their squishy members. And that's what's lacking on Trace Esports. That's why this is a great time for Alone right now to just keep on farming. Basically, ADG, the rest of the team of ADG is saying, Okay, Alone, just keep on farming. We're going to be engaging for, for the team while you just safely farm up. You're going to be untouched also later on, especially with your massive range and your buzzer shot and the jump available every single time. Ooh, this is looking scary. And ADG has to respect that they don't have the minions pushing in onto the turret so they have to retreat so that's a good call coming from edward gaming overall to not force out the issue not force out the fight because if they do force out the fight yes there is an opportunity for them to get those kills onto juju intact but if they lose that fight that was the thing that takes a lot of risk they're feeding juju a lot of gold and experience once again so they don't want that to happen so thus far they have to play it a bit more patiently up against the likes of juju to not give them advantage Great macro play coming from Grace Esports though. A while ago, the gold lead of ADG was 2,300. Oh yeah. Now it's chipped down to just under 1,000 gold. And it's not because of any kills. It's not because of any towers falling down. It's just from the farm that they have been able to secure more efficiently than EDG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is like really, really strong overall, right? The macro as well. And Hueba, once again, we have to not deny Hueba of his skills and his prowess when it comes to the rail when it comes to these macro plays right it was just perfect buying onto the edge of night as well denying that potential Ooh. cc is going to the ice drake langley no gauge cast gonna be used so isolate some of the members here of today's esports is still gonna be fine and the destiny is denied zero seven seven that's caught the twisted pain and now you is gonna be having the best of time to go in counter strike gonna be used but still unable to deny the entry here of the akali it is a disaster for crazy esports they got the dragon but the edg is getting the champions and edg is wanting more as well they will be able to take this tower into the bottom lane alone it's gonna be jumping alone. in and everyone is just gonna be exiting out oh that was really scary edg is still on the chase though but we'll opt to back away and this ju just buys them so much space to be able to get the tier 1 turret into the bottom lane. And remember, Baron Asher is coming up really, really soon. And the thing about what happened here is it was 0711 who was able to isolate Twisted Fate. So this was pretty much a 4v5. 0711 was a bit late coming into that ice break. But that is not something that exactly what EDG wanted. They want those kills. They want to just landslide trace esports. And that is what they were able to take. That is what they were able to achieve. And to think so, that alone wasn't really able to free it that much. That could have been the ace for EDG. But and they weren't able to get their another reset for alone. And still, Trace Esports was able to pick up the soul point here right now. It's again just a chance for them to scale up better than EDG. Yeah. Very, very good this far. Now, Tracy Esports needs to look for other values as well for those tier one turrets, for those gold injections. Oh no! That they need! Oh, that was so close. So close. Less than half HP for corn. Right. 
And, and that is what we're saying, right? These macro plays for Crazy Esports is still something that EDG has to respect. But the Marin Nash are being started. No information for Craze. And no Destiny as well available for Crazy Esports. God of the Board God gonna be used to try and check out the area. They spot them out, confirm that they are just taking this battle Nasher right now. EDG gonna be walking away for now. That was a good attempt. EDG knows that there was no information for Crazy Esports and Weiba came from the bottom lane to get the tier 1 turret. So Ooh. good attempt overall. Isolation. Back will be the front line. Zero 7-11 catching corn a little bit there. Lee South still committing. The pirates gonna be there in the follow-up as well. Lab we go again and just set Saints off. The charge is gonna be there as well as the counter response. These are still going in with counter strike as well. Like the shuriken get the oh. just there in EDG and I'm getting the reason to bust the shot as well to take three kills. And Tracy Sports is wiped out. EDG can just take this Baron. That cannot happen. You out of his mind. That was crazy! And now EDG takes the Baron Nasher for themselves. And this is what we've talked about a while ago, Gia. That EDG with a draft composition for Trace. This is just food and a feast served on a silver platter for their assassins. I mean, look at the damage that you were able to do. The electrocute coming into that with the shuriken flip was just on called for and EDG oh. is on the precipice to take this win up against the undefeated team in CN Conference. They're one step closer. They're one step closer towards the goal. 6,000 gold lead. Baron Nasher secured. Grace Esports is feeling the pressure right now. 0-7-11 spotting out. Lisa still is just going to be using Counter-Strike. Destiny going to be Langui. used to out by Langui. They catch. At least at their stun alone, gonna be alone, alone, alone. Alone. They've got him, but Lisa's gonna get taken down the stasis, but it's just super, and the is just so poor! And the Lotus is able to exit down! Sarjan gonna be here as well, Juju gonna be arcing shifting out as well, Langby gonna be leaving him be! Because Yu is still here. Again, a chance for Trace Esports to come back, but that was so close. That was really unfortunate coming from the side of EDG because Trace Esports took an opportunity for themselves. The call of the Forge God was the setter for Trace Esports. And then right after, the follow-up was also perfect. It was Alone who overextended his welcome coming into the mid lane. And at the end of the day, when it comes to those engages, it was Zach who really just put the bar up above for Trace Esports to make it back. But still, a 5k gold lead for EDG is not something that you have to turn your eyes on. And... Tracy Sports, they have to turn their eyes on this dragon right now. They have to secure it. Baron Fire plays just 158. That's how low it is. Especially because of that last team fight that occurred here. Tracy Sports still has a chance to take this back in their control. But they need to be very careful. They need to spot out alone. They need to cancel and use engage, especially by Langui. Sao Jan getting hit a little bit there, especially with a shock blast. They turn onto Langui, getting the damage done. The stage is gonna be used to buy oh, some time here. 0711 getting the isolation. The cast is gonna be used a little bit too late. Yu is here on the back side. Lisa is gonna be happy just getting his attention. Trace Esports with the numbers advantage this time. The shock blast led to Xiao Jiang. Trace Esports still has a chance to secure this soul. 0711 has the big responsibility to take this up. They turn on to you! Oh no! And it's gonna get taken down! Alone is out! Trace Esports having the numbers advantage still. 0711 is gonna be committing here onto the dragon. Okay. Getting, trying, attempting to steal. You going in, getting the kill onto Lisa. The dragon's still gonna be taken here by Trace Esports. And they have withstood the fight here against EDG. That's all point for Trace Esports. A while ago, EDG got a 5k gold lead. Now, it is brought down to 2k instead. And Trace Esports got a lot of gold from those kills. And Trace Esports is fighting back. This is why you should never, ever doubt Trace Esports. Even if they're behind. Even if they're against the Titan Slayers, EDG. They're still able to fight them back. To find yeah. a chink in their armor and make them regret showing them weakness. And this is such a massive loss coming from EDG because the thing is, they have to deny that point, but their positions was a little bit off edge. They were going in for the Dragon Spit, but every single one of them were separated. It was Langi who overextended coming into the bot side river and alone was caught up into those fights. It was a turnaround by Trace Esports that was able to really turn things around and now, there's only a 1k gold left to the advantage for the side of EDG. Whoa, that's a massive gold swing. Recovery, comeback, name it all. 
by Trace Esports. And EDG has lost their opportunity to close out this game at least for a bit. And Trace Esports having this lead right now, especially with the soul, can enable them to secure this Baron as well. They're positioning themselves well, pressuring EDG. Yeah, this is uh, very difficult for them. Oh, 13 seconds before the call of the fourth god, and Crazy Esports has to buy time! There's 7 11! Catching Li Sao. Counter Strike used as a response. Crazy Esports is still fine. But again, the ruthlessness here of EDG, they're always trying to engage, trying to have a great entry towards Crazy Esports. Yeah, and EDG has to double down onto the late game insurance that they have alone onto their Stana, right? They need. Those peels for their ADCs to be able to deal damage similar to what happened in game number one where alone was able to free hit time and time again. And they need to do a repeat move. Elder Drake is now up and Trace Esports has the better position. Yeah, they have the the, the better stats as well, especially because of the soul. They keep on poking 0711 and the rest of the members of EDG. They have a better position right now here. Oh, oh my no! god! That damage to 0711. They spot him out. You have the destiny invested as well, but guys is gonna be used. Dangby gonna be in a lot of trouble though. Still attack is gonna be initiated here. Call of the Force gonna be used. The flash in as well, but unable to catch 0711. I think execution yeah, needs to exit out. So Jang able to fire at least one of the CCs there of the Alone. Force. 0711 goes in. Stays his by some time. But again, they will be able to catch him out. At least able to flash out, but still gonna get taken down to Tracy Sports. Oh. Taking the jungler down. Oh my god, engage! Catching Twisted Fate. You're still gonna be able to survive. Trace Esports, 4 versus 4, has the jungler, we will be starting up this Elder Dragon. That's good. They were able to buy time. But the thing is, Trace Esports is just going for the Elder Drake. Can they get the steals? Our Chang is gonna be here. The modest damage well gonna be used by Langui. That's a load is getting the damage to oh! oh my god, and gaming getting the Elder Dragon! It's a disaster for Trace Esports! And they're just gonna chase down the ace by EDD! And they can just run this mid! Crazy Esports is swept under the rugs! EDG with oh that steal alone! Single-handedly no brought the game back to EDG! No. no way! No way that happened! EDG! Teleport is gonna be coming in! They're coming complete! In. Right now, they wanted this win! It's only Korn remaining alive, but they will not care! Because they are the God Slayers! And the second god will be slain! EDG 2-0 Swayze Sports! It's Edward Gaming who shatters the undefeated run of Trace Esports here in the CN Conference. That performance, once again, we've mentioned it, we've called it. If alone is left unattended with those free hits, he alone can win.